I want to talk today about a changed man. I'm Billy D. Teacher and welcome to my video channel here on YouTube. I'm taping this on Sunday night Aug August. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm taping this on Sunday night January 31st 2010 and one week from today is the Super Bowl. Uh, those of you who have been watch watched my videos last year know that I did a special one for the Super Bowl. Well, I'm planning to do something, do another special video related to the Super Bowl next Sunday. The video might be posted after the Super Bowl. However, please watch it at night or later in the week. Thanks much for letting me take care of that housekeeping item. Today I want to talk to you and more importantly, I want to let the Bible talk to you about a man who was changed. His name was Saul, and he, later his name was changed to Paul. But more importantly, he was changed on the inside, which affected who he was and where he was going. And to do that, I want to read from the Bible, Acts, from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Okay, you can get your Bibles and follow along, or you can just listen and follow along. Now Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way both men and women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem as he was traveling it happened that he was approaching Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him Saul Saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you Lord and he said I am Jesus whom you are persecuting but get up and enter the city and it will be told you what you must do verse 7 the men who traveled with him stood speechless hearing the voice but seeing no one Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate or drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Amos. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Amos. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Street, and inquire at the house of Judas, for a man from Tars named Saul, for he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Amos come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Amos answered, Lord, I have heard m from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake so Aeneas departed and entered the house and after laying his hands on him saying after laying his hands on him said brother Saul the Lord Jesus who approached appeared to you on the road by which you were coming has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit and merely there fell from his eyes something like scales and he regained his sight and he got up and was baptized verse 19 and he took food and was strengthened now for several days he was with the disciples who were at Damascus in verse 20 and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues saying he is the son of God okay what can we learn from these verses first of all nothing is impossible for God to do think about it. God Jesus died but he did not stay dead he rose in resurrection I think most of them would say it's impossible and right here in Acts 9, he took a man who was only not a follower of Jesus, but persecuted those who did follow Jesus. So right here we see the God, impossible odds are God's kind of odds. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. Two, 
God has to speak to a soul for them to see their need to put their faith in Him. You and I can do and or say all the right things. People can hear all the right preaching, or you can if you're a non-believer. But unless God speaks to you or to a soul, uh, to the people you know that don't know Him, they will never be brought to Him. John 6.44 says, No one can come to God unless the Father draws them. God has to do a work in them. Yes, we should witness for Christ. Yes, we should pray for those who don't know Christ. But ultimately, God has to do a work in them, and they have to respond to that. 3. God will use anyone who comes to faith in Christ and are willing to let God use them. The key is not how much you know, or who you are, or how much training you have. The key is, are you willing to let the Lord use you? Are you willing to trust Him to use you? Here in Acts 9, God used the killer, a redeemed killer. All over this nation, God is using different people in different ways that will amaze you, including men and women in prison. Some like the one I am blessed to minister to, are, li lives on death row. So God can use anyone who will trust Him. Finally, God can change anyone. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Religion doesn't change anyone. Even going to church doesn't change one by itself. It is Jesus coming into one that will change them. Also, all of us need to be changed. You may be thinking, well, I'm not a murderer like Saul was here. I don't need to be changed. I'm good enough. Well, the Bible in Romans 3.23 says and teaches all of us are sinners. No matter if you are the Pope, Billy Graham, or a killer living in some prison, you are a sinner and you need to be changed. Okay, and the way to be changed is just to say, Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I receive your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. The words are important. Important is what you mean in your heart and your soul. So, to review, what can we learn from Acts 9? First of all, again, nothing is impossible for God. Second, God has to speak to a soul for them to see their need to put their faith in Him. Three, God will use anyone who comes to faith in Christ and are willing to let God use them. Fourth, God can change anyone, and all of us need to be changed. Thanks for watching this video. If I can be a help spiritually, please go to my blog and email me. Until next time, I'm Billy D. Teacher. I'll see you.